Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope everybody had a good day. Had a pretty good day today. Another relaxing day, which was really nice. Got to work from home again today because of the wonderful weather we're having in Ohio. But uh, weather's pretty much moved out. Thank God. It's cold now. Uh, I think it's supposed to go down into the teens here tonight um, with wind chills in the, in the negatives, which is not fun, but it is what it is. We'll get through it. You know, just like Ohio weather, the first of the week, it's supposed to go up into the fifties. So you wonder why everybody's so sick, you know, it's in the negatives one day and in the forties and fifties the next day. That's just Ohio weather for you. Wanted to talk about last night, I had put a, a question up about, you know, what people would like to hear about topic wise, things of that nature. And someone had mentioned illness, illness and recovery is something that they'd like to hear, share, talk about. We're going to talk about that tonight and Narcotics Anonymous from the NA side there just for today. Um, Talks about feeling good. Feeling good isn't the point. Uh, I'm going to bring that reading up first, and I'll share on that reading real quick. Kind of share as I go along. This feeling good isn't the point. I'm going to bring it up on my phone because, again, my eyeballs are absolutely terrible. Of course, I'm getting a phone call as I'm trying to bring this up on my phone, making things difficult. Never fails. February 4th, feeling isn't the point. It says, for us, recovery is more than just pleasure. As an interactive addiction, most of us knew exactly how we were going to feel from one day to the next. I relate to that. Whether I had any dope or not, I knew how I was going to feel from day to day, especially when I was using. Because we all had to do. All we had to do was read the label on the bottle or know it was in the bag that we had set in back. If you were able to set it back, I always try, but I was never successful. I'd say, oh, I'm going to put this back for tonight or for when I wake up. It never happened. I don't know about you guys, but it sure as hell didn't happen for me. It says we planned our feelings and our goal for each day was to feel good. Ultimately, it was to feel good even when we were using or to feel normal. It says in recovery, we're liable to feel anything from one day to the next, even from one minute to the next. And I relate to that because there's days where my feelings can be all over the place. Uh, life may show up unexpectedly. Um, and it's just a matter of how I deal with it. Um, I have to embrace those feelings when they happen and share and talk about them. Um, it just came out of a meeting and, you know, people were talking about just being open and honest about how you feel when these feelings, you know, crop up. Uh, I like to call it getting butt naked on it. Um, cause first of all, I struggled with getting honest and I don't like getting naked. So I call it butt naked honest because it's something that I have to work on daily because I don't like to do it. Um, says we may feel energetic and happy in the morning and then strangely let down and sad in the afternoon feelings all over the place uh, for those that struggle with mental health struggles um, your ups and downs your manics um, I relate to all that so you know feeling great one minute and wanting to choke somebody to the next isn't unusual for me to feel either uh, it says because we're no longer because we can no longer plan our feelings for today, each morning we could get up having feelings that were somewhat inconvenient, like feeling tired, not wanting to get up, being lazy. Morning, you know, feeling tired in the morning to feeling wide awake at bedtime. That was Addy and I last night. We were up till three, four o'clock in the morning last night, wide awake, just eyeballs wide open, um, really for no reason. Maybe because I put an extra couple of scoops and a coffee. Um, that's probably why for real. Um, just some nights I'm not tired, you know, when I know it's time to go to bed and I, 
I would go to re- lay down and, you know, my mind won't shut off. My mind races. Um, I have a hard time shutting down, you know, what's going on with me. Um, I struggle with that at times. Um, just turning my brain off sometimes is not easy for me to do. Um, that's why we learn coping skills and new strategies uh, in recovery, uh, like meditation and prayer and music therapy. I'm just throwing a few examples out there to work for me. Um, to try to to try to get your mind off of whatever it's on, uh, so you can rest. You know, rest your head, rest your brain. Because <clears throat> of course, there's always the possibility we could feel good. That isn't the point. Today, our main concern is not feeling good, but learning to understand and deal with our feelings, no matter what they are. Embracing those feelings. A friend of mine calls it embracing the suck. You know, if your feelings are way out there, you know, and you're having a bad day, you have to embrace them, share, talk about them. Um, Because no matter what they are, we are doing this by working the steps, whatever 12-step program you may work, and sharing our feelings with others. I will accept my feelings, whatever they may be, just as they are. You can't control them, guys. You know, you have to allow them to come and just share and talk about them when they happen. I will practice the program and learn to live with my feelings. It's something that I have personally struggled with. You know, I allowed uh, some feelings and some deep core issues of my past to hold me back in my recovery. Um, you know, I, I had a hard time, uh, you know, wanting to humble myself, uh, to practice humility, um, and to share open and honest with other people. Uh, welcome everybody that's coming in. I'm just now seeing some of the chat. Welcome, Patty. Um, it's just not easy um, because sometimes those, those feelings for me, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes those feelings are really, really uncomfortable to share and talk about and to be honest and talk about. Um, but I have found the longer I work the steps of my 12-step program that I personally work, um, the easier it has gotten. Patty said, just remember, feelings are not facts and we are not our feelings. Makes a difference knowing that. And it's true. Uh, And they're temporary. You know, we can get through these these struggles, these trials, these tribulations, as long as we share them or open and honest about them. uh, And we get out of those old behaviors and thought patterns that I know I struggled with for a long time. And the big one was isolation. Um, It was easier for me to put my DOC on whatever I was feeling or struggling or going through and just not feeling anymore. Uh, Shutting the world off to everyone, uh, including my family and friends. I just simply did not want to feel. Welcome, Kathleen. Um, Just seeing some of you guys popping in here. I appreciate you guys coming in. That was the JFT. It's a really good reading. It's an important reading um, because, honestly, for me, feelings can suck at times, and I don't like talking and sharing about them. Um, maybe it's an ego thing. Maybe it's a guy thing. I don't think it is though. Um, I think I'm not the only one that struggles with it. Um, it's just uncomfortable sometimes to get, to get butt naked on it. Um, that's for sure. Patty said, talking about isolation, no hugs or kisses for the month. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I had mastered isolation. I don't know about you, but I had become a master isolator, a manipulator, a liar, a thief. Boy, I could go on and on with the character defects. I have got this really cool reading that I found. I'm not going to bring it up on screen because it's gigantic. Um, It's from a website called 12 Keys. Um, Like I had said when I first went live, I wanted to talk about illness, illness and recovery. More importantly, what happens when you're clean, uh, you're clean or you're sober, and something comes up, surgery comes up, uh, something medically necessary shows up, you know, um, how, do you, how do you deal with these, uh, these struggles, these issues, uh, these concerns? I just personally went through this myself with having a major knee surgery, um, and I had to deal with it. And I'll, I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, and how I handled it personally. Um, the big important thing for me was to share and talk about it and to come up with a game plan of how I was going to get through it. Um, 
It wasn't easy, but I got through it. 12 keys. It says illness and recovery. Um, this is from their personal blog. I thought this reading was really cool. So I'm just going to read it and share it with you guys. And it's kind of broke down into different segments. And the first one says taking medication and staying clean. That's just about any addict. The phrase take as prescribed is considered a suggestion. How many times have you looked at that bottle and read take as prescribed and grabbed a handful and just walked away? I'm guilty of that. I did that a lot. I don't know about you guys, but if it said take two every hour, I took 10. You know, that was just me. That's the addict I had become. It said instead of one every four hours, they take four every four hours. It says to people in recovery, this is a joke. To others, they think they have a problem, and this may be a warning sign. Definitely a warning sign, recognizing those addictive behaviors. It says, talk to your, it says, talk to your doctor, sponsor, and friend. These are all recommended suggestions that I'm going to read. It says, any addict's body doesn't know the difference between prescribed drugs and street drugs. It doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know whether you're putting a prescribed medication in you or a street drug. It says, a drug is a drug is a drug. When we go to the doctor for anything, we explain that we are in recovery. We're recovering addicts alcoholics, whatever your DOC is, and ultra sensitive to any mood and mind altering drug. That's exactly what I did. I was open and honest with my, uh, my doctors and my care team when I had this surgery and shared with them exactly where I was at, what was going on, that I needed to find a safe, healthy plan to get through this because I knew that there was going to be pain medication involved and how I was going to deal with it, how I was going to get through it, how they were going to be administered, handled at home. You know, I had a lot of questions, and quite frankly, it made me nervous. It scared me. Um, I hadn't had any type of narcotic pain medication in years, and it scared me um, to the point to where I stayed in pain by choice longer than probably I should have, because it made me sick to my stomach thinking about it. It made me super uncomfortable and it made me super nervous. Um, but I got through it and I came up with a game plan. As we talked to a sponsor, exactly what I did. Others in recovery. Um, talk to us about our appointment or upcoming surgery, whatever medical thing you're going to go through. As we talk to our doctor about any alternative treatment treatments or medications that may be available. <clears throat> We can find out if we can take smaller doses, you know, adjust them, uh, come up with something that maybe is non-narcotic uh, or not nearly as impactful. We can go to our meetings and share about our upcoming surgery and to let our support groups know that we've been suffering, that we've been in pain, we've been hurting. The best policy is always honesty. That's why I like this because this, this article is so dead on. It says, one of the most important things to remember is not to play doctor. We are not doctors. Well, some of you may be, but I'm definitely not a doctor. It says we self-medicate during our active addiction. Our home group, sponsor, and other, or other recovering addicts may actually know better than us when it comes to medication. It's that lived experience I talk about all the time that is so important and why it's so important to share and to get that experience, strength, and hope, to get that feedback from other people um, because it's that relatable experience that makes us so much stronger. It really, really is. It says, although neither fellowship, AA, NA, has an opinion about medication, it's an outside issue, uh, it's Tradition 10, uh, NA and NA has no, uh, no opinion on outside issues, hence their name ought never be drawn into public controversy. But it says, we as addicts, sorry, I'm trying to scroll, says we as addicts are not unique. Says we're going to be in pain, we're going to be in accidents, and we're going to need surgery, especially when we get older. Uh, life shows up, guys. It's going to happen. Uh, the pain is inevitable. The suffering is optional, and it really is. The suffering is truly optional. Um, says no one is asking you. Uh, to be the martyr, just be cautious. Be aware of what's going on with you. 
That's that key awareness. Really, when you talk to your doctor about your prescription and your medication. Next little reading on here says it's about medication for, for mental illness. So if it's not the upcoming procedure or the upcoming surgery, maybe it's the mental health that you're struggling with. Um, as many people use drugs and self-medicate it. I did all the time. We abuse them as children. We suffer from depression or bipolar or manic. Um, I struggle with anxiety and depression myself. Um, says the medical term for an addict with an additional mental illness is dual diagnosis. So if you've ever heard the term dual diagnosis, dual diagnosis treatment centers, addiction and mental health, they go hand in hand, folks, hand in hand. Um, almost 10 times out of 10, if you're an addict, you have some type of mental health struggle that you've been struggling with for a really long time. Um, I'm guilty and right on it. Um, says when we stop using drugs, the reason why we got high, it's not going away. Just because we stop using drugs doesn't mean all those thoughts and feelings are going away, folks. They're not. They didn't for me. They still haunt me to this day. Um, they still show up. Um, says we will need to ask, possibly for professional help in dealing with our other disease, which is the mental health struggle part of it. Just as we go to the dentist for a toothache, uh, for the doctor, for whatever, says we must consult a doctor if we're suffering with mental health. It's really that simple. But, you know, they say it's a simple program for complicated people. And I know myself, I overcomplicate everything. I really do. It's really easy for me to do because I struggle with control. And I don't like taking suggestions from people. Uh, sometimes I don't like to be open-minded and willing to try new things. Um, I still struggle with it today. Um, with the simplest stuff too, which is crazy, but I'm getting better. You know, I, I didn't become addicted in one day, so I have to remind myself to slow down and easy does it. Bringing up the little sayings. It says many times we call in AA, NA, whatever A you're in, outside help is all we need. We sit down and talk to a therapist that can help us with our mental help, our mental health and our mental well-being. Other times, a physician may need to be consulted in order to prescribe drugs for our bipolar, our depression, whatever your struggle is. Again, we're going to talk to our sponsor. We're going to talk to our loved ones, people that love and care about us, our friends, our support group, the tools in our recovery toolbox about what's going on with us, the medications that may be prescribed, their effect, how they're going to affect us. Um, it's important that we don't self-diagnose take anything out of any of this we're not doctors and we don't self-diagnose um, especially if we're romancing suicidal thoughts suicidal tendencies um, I had gotten to that point at one point in my you know the, the height of my addiction it says now that we're in recovery we need to be responsible for ourselves and honest with everyone about what's going on with us if you're having a good day share about it if you're having a shitty day you share about it if you're struggling with your medication, you're in pain, um, you're having using thoughts or feelings, you reach out. You reach out and ask for help. Um, it talks about hospital stay. Uh, thankfully, my surgery uh, was outpatient, and I didn't have to stay. I, was, I got to come home. Um, but it's just it's pretty much the same thing. You know, if you know you're going to be going into the hospital and you're going to stay at the hospital for any amount of time. Just be honest and communicate with your healthcare providers, the professionals that have your best interests at heart, um, what's going on with you, um, and allow them to help you get through whatever your struggle may be. Um, this thing even goes in depth with chronic illness. People that struggle with something that's chronic, that's not going away. It says, although we may not have been diagnosed for getting clean and sober, we may come to find out that we have a chronic illness. Surprise, surprise, we're taking care of ourselves, and we start going to the doctor, and we start getting these blood work results back, and we've been struggling with something our whole life we didn't even know we were struggling with. Uh, it happens, guys. It doesn't matter what it is. It just may be life-threatening, or it just it says and we we must, Stay clean 
and sober, no matter what, even if it's life threatening, uh, if it's terminal, uh, no matter what, we stay clean. We don't pick up because like most addicts and alcoholics, we're going to have those good days and we're not going to have great days. We're going to have good days and bad days. It's not going to be fucking rainbows and unicorns every day. Um, I wish it was. Again, I shared this last night. If it was rainbows and unicorns every day, that'd be pretty awesome. Um, but let's just be realistic. Life's going to show up. And sometimes life's a shit storm. And it's just how we approach it, how we go through it, how we deal with it. What tools in our recovery toolbox? Uh, are we going to be negative? Are we going to change our thought process to a positive one? And get out of that stinking thinking, you know, live in the solution and not the mess. It's our choice. It's our choice every day. Every single day I have to reset. I have to start my day over, start fresh, day in and day out, and surrender each and every single day. Because the main thing is we focus on living just for today. We focus on being here. We focus on ourselves and our recovery. As we allow others to know where we're at and be honest with them. We don't have to play the victim role. We don't have to let it, the chronic illness beat us up. Uh, we don't have to let that chronic illness pump quarters in that ass kicking machine. You don't have to pour me yourself to death. These are all things that are a choice. Um, I simply just choose don't, don't do it. You know, I just share and I, I'm open and honest about it. Um, you know, stay connected with your support groups. Stay connected with your friends that are clean and have your best interests at heart, your family, your loved ones, your sponsors, your mentors. Uh, and more importantly, guys, your higher power, whatever your higher power is, if you're understanding, mine personally is God. Stay connected with your higher power. Prayer is a very, very powerful tool. Uh, we need to pray for that acceptance. Uh, doesn't mean we need to like it. Um, cause man, I tell you what, sometimes I've prayed for some acceptance and really got a whole handful of it. Um, and sometimes it's uncomfortable. Um, but you know, ultimately I know I have to get through those uncomfortable situations, thoughts, and feelings in order to get where I, you know, I need to go or where, where my higher power is trying to guide me. Um, I have to let go and let God guys, um, I have to, Stay out of that damn driver's seat and apply myself and just trust the process. That trust and faith in the process. As we get some gratitude, you guys know I love talking about gratitude. Uh, and remain grateful uh, for our new way of life, you know, our new way of living. Um, it's amazing. I don't know about you guys, but I'm extremely grateful for how my life is going today and how things are going for me today. Even when I have bad days, and life shows up, they're not that bad. It's nothing like it was when I was in active addiction. I mean, it's nowhere near it, nowhere near it. Like I just get through it. I move on. If I have to hit that reset button, I hit that reset button. There's the 12 steps, whatever 12 step program you work. Says that we had a spiritual awakening as a result of the steps of these steps. And we tried to carry the message that the addicts or alcoholics and practice these principles in all our affairs. It's one of the most important acts of selflessness is helping another addict that is suffering with an illness, reaching out, practicing step 12, being of service, that therapeutic value of one person, one addict, one alcoholic, Helping another is without parallel. And it's so true. I could read that over and over again because it's so meaningful to me in my life today. It's part of my profession today. Uh, not only do I get to reach out and help others, um, but I get to reach out and ask for help or for help from people like yourself uh, that love and care about me when I'm struggling and when I'm going through some shit and when I need some help. It says our disease is one. Uh, that wants us to isolate. You know, our disease wants us dead. It doesn't want us to be here. It's knocking on our door. Uh, the devil, he's knocking on our door daily, our disease. It's there every day. It doesn't go away. Just waiting for us to drop our guard, waiting for us to slip up, make a mistake, get complacent, uh, get lazy, things that I struggle with. It says, there's an addict. There's always an addict whether it's virtual, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's on 
social media, whether it's an in-person meeting, whether it's on the other end of your phone, whether it's on the other end of your phone, which this can be a super heavy, heavy thing to pick up at times and use and to reach out and ask for help. Um, but it says right there, you know, it, it, it's, it's literally a phone call away. Um, you know, and when we get these phone calls, um, you know, it's that unconditional love of one addict helping another people that are loving and caring, um, telling you that it's okay, Joe, not to be okay. Um, I understand, um, those little small acts of kindness and compassion that are so important, uh, and wonderful, um, when they happen as accepting is a process, accepting our illness may even be more than a process. We have to come to terms with our feelings, which are much like grief. You know, sometimes coming to terms with our feelings and realizing that this is the way it's going to be the rest of our lives, especially if it's something chronic, it's easier said than done, um, especially for those that struggle with the mental health and are fighting and are fighting daily um, and struggle with it daily. Um, Coping and dealing with feelings, man, and coming to terms with that, knowing that you're going to have to do this every single fucking day of your life until, until you're not here anymore. Um, that's pretty tough. I mean, I'm going to be honest. That's, that's easier said than done at times. Um, you know, dealing with anger and fear and depression, um, says whether we're an addict or not, these feelings are normal. They happen. Um, just because you're having those feelings doesn't mean you're Looney Tunes or you're crazy. Um, it's just a matter of how we deal with these feelings. That's what, that's what matters the most is how we deal with these feelings. Um, you have that choice every day, whether you want to act, react, you know, that whole react or respond scenario. Um, it's a choice every single day. Um, and practice and acceptance and just realizing this is the way it is. This is the way it's going to be. Um, you know, we can find some kind of level of surrender and acceptance. Um, you know, and that, that surrender and acceptance, honestly, guys, it's going to outweigh a lot of anger and fear. It really is, you know, surrendering to something and accepting it. It's going to outweigh that anger and fear, uh, almost 10 times out of 10. Um, but again, it's easier said than done. Um, you know, just try to practice that compassion and empathy. If someone's reaching out to you, um, and they're struggling, um, you know, when somebody gives you that phone call and they're crying on the other end of the phone, um, they're just, they're reaching out. They're asking for help. They need an ear to listen to, to help them get through whatever they're struggling with, whatever they're going through. You know, these feelings pass guys. It usually doesn't last nearly as long as we think they do. Um, and, you know, we can successfully get through another day by practicing that and doing that daily. Um, because usually if they're calling you, they realize that you've been there and you've done that and that you understand how they feel. Um, and that you're there to help and to recommend suggestions offered by whatever program you may be working, um, to get through another day, you know, I uh, get through another day clean. And that's, that's the important thing right there is just getting through the day without using and picking up. Man, that was a killer reading. I don't know about you guys. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, the struggles with addiction and mental health, again, go hand in hand and dealing with that daily, day in and day out. We just have to surrender to it and accept it. Uh, Patty said, it's amazing that recovery friends can be how they can be in recovery. It's such a gift, especially when they're all over the world. Who would have thought? And it's true. Um, uh, my recovery network, just like I know for a fact, Patty's, um, is worldwide. Um, you know, the virtual part of recovery, um, the zoom platforms, um, have allowed that to happen successfully daily. Um, 24 hours a day, there is a meeting going on for almost every single A program out there. I know there's some for AA. I know there's definitely some for NA. CA has them. Um, you know, 
they're out there. They're available. There is a meeting going on. There is absolutely no excuse do not remain vigilant in your recovery daily, day in and day out. You know, I used to use the excuse, well, it's snowing outside or it's raining outside or I don't feel like leaving the house. I'm not going to a meeting today. Well, that's out the window. Can't do that today because it's, this is easy. It's all I got to do is reach over and turn the computer on now. And it's usually always on. So I just don't have an excuse, you know, stop making excuses and apply ourselves, right? Apply myself. Um, remain vigilant, put in the work. Um, it's just what we have to do daily, day out, day in and day out in order to stay clean. I want to thank each and every one of you guys. You're all badass recovery warriors. I appreciate you guys coming in and listening to me ramble long windedly ramble tonight. Um, I love doing this guys, you know, I do. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys that come in daily and are vigilant in your recovery to listen to the streams. Uh, not only does it help me tremendously, hopefully something that I say makes some sense to you guys. Um, and you take something from it. Um, please share the streams. I'm just streaming live on Facebook tonight. Um, I upload to YouTube. For now, so to be on YouTube here in a little bit. If you miss some of it, you can always go back on either platform and watch it. I want to thank you guys again. I appreciate you guys being here. We will catch you guys again tomorrow night. I hope everybody has a wonderful, blessed night, and we will talk to you guys later.